Welcome to my tutorial for Gears 5 Insane Mode Solo. There's definitely a few challenging encounters in this video. This shows the first few um, chapters, I guess they're called, in Act 3. You get a new ability here where you can um, possess the enemies and make them fight for you for a little while, which is pretty useful. Initially, if you use your stealth ability, you can get at least two kills before running back to this little cover area here. For this part, I'm going to kind of sit back and pick away at the enemies for a while. It does get kind of drawn out. I wasn't too aggressive because they're able to shoot you down really quick. One thing I would have used, I would have used the bombs on the GL Lancer, but I couldn't remember how to use them because I hadn't played this game and it might have even been close to a year. I started playing again yesterday. I did play some online fairly recently, but I haven't played the single player or used that weapon in a while, so I didn't remember exactly how to use the, uh, the little grenades that you can launch. All you have to do is hold RB to highlight the enemy and then release it, but I didn't realize that. So yeah, so for this part, I just kind of hang back Try to take out what I can. And if you can if you can um, take possession of the enemies that are close to the turret, you can at least kind of distract the turret user and he'll most likely take damage from the other um, the other swarm enemy that's possessed. So you may want to possess one of those that are close to the turret area. At the very least, it'll at least make it so there's less bullets coming your way because one of the uh, swarms won't be shooting at you since it'll be possessed. Keep in mind also that you can respec all your abilities at any time. Just go to respec in the ability menu. And that way you can have um, whatever abilities maxed out for whatever specific encounters you want. It's a little bit tedious to do it for every encounter to, to you know, you don't really need to do that, but... You may want to take some of your points out of some of the abilities you're not using in some of the encounters and then max out uh, your, clo your cloak ability or your, uh, you know, your possession ability, whatever that's called. Because sometimes there's some good features of those abilities, like um, having the target stimmed so that the target that you possess can survive longer, things like that. Here I was trying to take a side route and see if I could flank them a little bit, but um, it's closed off, so that didn't end up working out. So yeah, try to try to wear these guys out. You know, thin them out slowly and take your time. You don't really want to run up aggressively because you can get taken out very, very quickly. Because there's at least tur two turret gunners, and you know, just having one turret gunner will wipe you out very quick, but when you have two of them, Often at the same time, they can kill you almost instantly. So you see the kind of damage you take from just a few little pellets. So um, it's better just to try to do what you can from a distance first. If you do have the GL Lancer, you may want to use your, um, your grenades on the, the, the two turret positions. That would probably speed things up. One thing you can do here is possess this um, turret user up at the top here and then get around to the side and shoot one of the barrels. You know, since he's possessed, he won't be able to shoot you, and you'll be able to run up to one of these barrels and shoot it. As long as you can shoot that barrel, you can take him out. Now, initially, I was trying to shoot at Jack because he was down, and I didn't realize that that was him and not an enemy. So, yeah, now I edit this because there was some exploration of me trying to grab ammo off the field, which is pretty useless to watch. And then shortly after, there's another, another wave of enemies that comes. I don't know if you get a checkpoint, so you may have to survive this. But see, there's another wave of enemies coming back here. It's those little enemies, I believe they're called juvies, the small, crawling, fast enemies that um, basically just melee attack you. So try to shoot which ones you can, blow up some barrels and try to do some damage. But then what I ended up doing was retreating out of this area. I completely left the area. And I was going to come back slowly and take enemies out, but then my team was getting wiped out. So I had to be, you know, extremely aggressive and uh, pretty precise to take all the enemies out since my, my team was getting wiped out. So I couldn't take cover anymore, really, at that point. 
So yeah, make sure you grab one of these uh, turret guns at least, and, you, and then at least you can um, be aggressive with that if you need to. This probably wasn't the best way to do this part, but this was how I ended up winning. Try to possess which um, which enemies that you can possess so that you can, you know, they won't attack you and they can attack the other enemies and help you out a little bit. It's useful to do that when you can. Of course, use stim as needed if you're about to uh, die or if you're getting overrun by enemies, use stim. But yeah, you can see my team was pretty much getting wiped out. It's unfortunate in this game. It's irritating that if your teammates get killed, you automatically lose. I never liked that. You know, I I much rather just look out for my for myself and my own character than try to protect these assholes. So yeah, if there's someone behind the turret, you know, just throw a grenade and that'll wipe out because somebody may take that turret back there, like you saw. So now this is an easy part. I think I actually gave my um, my guys a torque bow and a boom shot, so they went pretty aggressive with the explosives. And I'm sure that did a lot of damage, as you can see. So yeah, this is a pretty standard encounter. Just, you know, take cover. Don't let the guys get too close to you. Try to take them down before they get to you. You have a lot of abilities, and this is a very easy encounter compared to some of the other ones. So there's not too much to say about this. There are a few tricky encounters, though, in, in the, uh, the next few encounters shown here. I believe the progress here took me around an hour and 45 minutes or something like that. I have to check the exact time when I post the video up. So yeah, this part can be tough. There's a very specific way to stealth kill all the enemies, though. I show how I stealth killed everyone. Um, everyone that I possibly could before the guys bust through the door. So basically, I go into stealth mode. Take this guy out and then go immediately take out the other guy. And hopefully you have the stealth ability that gives you a little bit of extra time in stealth mode when you take someone out. That's very useful. I recommend upgrading the stealth fully for this encounter so that you can pull off this, this method. You don't have to be in the stealth mode to stealth kill these guys. They just have to be facing the other way. But it is more reliable, especially if you're trying to take out multiple enemies quickly. So you can do it without that. Now one thing that's very fucking irritating about this game is that the stealth mechanic is very, very fucking inconsistent. I mean, you could be right on someone's back and the prompt will never come up and, and you'll just do a little slap to their back, which then alerts everyone and you'll pretty much get killed because this is a very, very compromised position. If you get revealed, you're pretty much dead. You don't really have any time to get, it, to get away. So this method relies pretty much on stealth killing everyone. If you fuck up on anyone, you have a good chance of dying. This guy will never see you if you just stay on that cover, and you can just do this. So just do it in this order, because new enemies do spawn. As you can see, these enemies came through that door on the bottom floor, and some other uh, swarm enemies came up on the top floor through the windows. So Stealth kill this group once you have your, your stealth meter, uh, your stealth ability available. Again, you want to stealth kill these guys down here. And now make it back to where we just were. Now I edited this down. It's a long wait time. You can see my stealth meter just charged up. And uh, that probably took over a minute for it to charge, so it is a long wait. But I don't want to show that in the video because it's pointless to, to sit around and watch my meter charge. Because that's all I did was just camp there until my meter charged. So then take out this group of enemies. I was able to take out four enemies on one charge here. I did run out of my charge near the end on this fourth guy, but I had enough time to get in there and take him out. You always have the ability to retreat to a wall or a close by cover and just hide for a little while until it recharges. So if you're unable to kill all four guys like that, um, you know, don't try to force it, you know, just get to a safe place and wait it out. Wait for your meter to charge again if you need to. I was able to play pretty efficiently because I died on this part several times because of prompts not registering, which is very fucking irritating. 
you know, you'll be directly behind a guy, but you won't have a prompt to stab him in the neck, so you'll you'll slap him and alert everybody, and then you're fucking pretty much fucked. So, you do have, you know, you may fuck up a few times from that, but once you know what to do, you know, the order to take the guys out, which is what I figured out just by playing, um, it's really not hard to do, it's just that it can get a little sloppy sometimes, and it takes a while with all the waiting for, for the uh, stealth to charge. So now, after you kill all these guys, be careful, because if you get close to this door right here at the end of the area, all the guys are going to come out. So don't do that unless you're ready, because you don't even get a checkpoint after stealth killing all those dudes. So yeah, I like to throw a grenade and then tag the other grenade on the wall over there. That's what I ended up doing, just to thin out the guys and damage them a little bit. And then I go all the way back to the beginning of the stage. That way I can kind of just take my time and pick the guys off normally as, you know, would normally do in many areas. And I was using my, my grenades at this point from the GL Lancer to do some extra damage. But as long as you sit back here and, and you know, use the puppeteer mode or whatever it's called in this where you uh, possess people. Because that will get guys off your ass and it'll also allow the, the enemies to attack each other a little bit. It'll thin them out a little bit and, and weaken them. There's also going to be a... Um, I don't know if there was a, a warden in this area. I can't remember, but... Um, in any case, you know, use use that shit to your advantage with, um, you know, I think that was just a regular, I don't think that was a warden, but um, I end up finishing off this guy, and then that, that, get, that gets the checkpoint. You really just have to be, it's not hard if you're ready for that door to open. I got killed the first time because I didn't realize that door was going to open and swarm me with all those enemies, so I got destroyed. Now, this next part is the hardest part of the video so far. This is a tough fight. Um, it took me several attempts. It didn't take too long, but it could have taken a lot longer. What I do is I grenade tag these um, wall and these sandbags over here in this area because that's where I'm going to retreat to after a while. But now grenade tagging that area, the only reason I did that is because I had um, six grenades available and I had four. I could only hold four. So I picked up the extra two and I just tagged them in the environment just you know for a little extra uh, protection when I go back to that retreat to that area. So first thing is, after you activate Jack on the door, make sure you get to this turret. I like to uh, to use the possession mode on the first enemy that shows up, which is a uh, juvie with bombs attached to it, you know, grenades attached to it. So I possess that one immediately because it causes a little bit of a disruption in this initial wave. So I possess the first one, and then I just start firing on all these guys as they're approaching. I try to take out every juvie that, that approaches by cooling down the turret and, and trying to fire efficiently. Um, if they do get past, it can be dangerous because they can kill you very quick. And then I try to put as many bullets into these uh, swarm drones as possible as they approach. I believe they're the grenadier type with the shotguns, and they have good armor, so they're a pain in the ass. So I try to take out one or two of them completely. And then I use my stim and I run into that room where I tag the grenades. So I use stim, run into here. Um, and then there's another turret over here. It's not as strong as that turret, but it's a mulcher, which is a decent, powerful uh, turret gun. It's good enough. Now the grenades that I tagged in the environment may take out a few of the enemies that rush. The problem is it usually takes out the weak enemies like the juvies, which are very weak enemies, and you don't really need to uh, use grenades on them. So it is kind of a waste a lot of times. See, like here it uses a grenade. But it's still better than not using them at all since I had two extra ones. So, yeah, just protect your, your, um, your position over here. Try to, try to take these guys out so they can't get to you. Your teammates are going to take a beating most likely. Like, you see my teammates are getting beat up bad. But uh, eventually I did have to come out of there because the, the warden came in. But try to take out as many of these guys as you can. Now somehow they revived. Jack may have revived them. Or I don't know how they all revived like that. But you saw there was about three or four of them down and they revived. I'm not really sure. I don't think I did that. I didn't um, summon Jack over there to do that. But now the warden comes through. So this guy's very dangerous in a confined area. I, I pretty much deposit all four of my grenades on his ass. You know, I make a little deposit. And that does some, you know, good initial damage. But the good thing about this fight is that you can use your your, uh, your possession mode on the Warden. So we're going to use that in a moment. But see, now I run and I get to this turret. 
And this is very dangerous. I had to take these guys out rather quickly. I didn't have, uh, you know, I was getting damaged pretty fast. I was lucky to be able to take them all out. And now I can take possession of the, um, of the warden here. And while he's possessed, um, in a moment I'm going to get back on the turret and just shoot the shit out of his head while he's possessed because then I can, I can do a lot of damage to him before he wakes up. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to, uh, you know, damage him as much as I can before he wakes up from that possession mode. Possession is a good way to actually, um, you know, damage enemies as well, especially if you get the add-on that, that makes the, uh, the possessed opponent explode after the possession wears off. I think that kills them, but I, I, didn't, I didn't have that. I forget how I got that. I think I've had it before. I may have to do some side missions in this area. But yeah, once I killed this warden, it turned out there was one more hunter enemy with a torque bow just hiding behind these crates here. He didn't show himself. It almost seems like he just spawned out of nowhere. You see, I grabbed these components here because I didn't see any enemies, but I noticed I didn't get the checkpoint, so... I thought maybe the game glitched and I was going to have to restart the checkpoint because sometimes shit like that does happen in these games. But eventually the hunter will show himself. It's, it's that area right there that I've passed you know, many, many times. I've ran past it a bunch of times, but the uh, enemy never appeared. You see, and I'm looking through this turret and I still don't see him. But now when I run down, you'll see his, he's just going to pretty much appear out of nowhere. But luckily he did appear and I was able to kill him. He, I probably almost got, you know, killed because he popped out of nowhere. But see, look, he just, it looked like he spawned out of nowhere. And he's immediately shooting the torque bow, so. But once I finish him off, the checkpoint ends. That is a difficult uh, fight, though. That could have took me a lot longer, but I was able to, to beat it fairly quickly. Now this part is very cheap on Insane. After you push this thing the second time, um, you get, you know, pretty much surrounded by two pouncers immediately, which killed me instantly the first time I got here. So you want to be ready to, to put your stim mode on and just run out of the area immediately. So use stim and run down those stairs. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take possession of one of the pouncers. Luckily you can possess them with your possession ability. So possess one of them. It doesn't matter which one. And now you don't have to fight the one that you possessed. And the possessed one is going to do a lot of damage to the remaining pouncer. He actually ends up killing the remaining pouncer. So it makes it much easier by doing that. So, you know, try to help him out to fight the other pouncer if you can to do some extra damage. But there's a good chance that he will kill the other pouncer. And then you only have to deal with one of these enemies. See, now there's only one left. You have a lot of cover areas, stairs, and things like that to kind of run around and hide. The pouncer will instantly kill you. If the quills hit you, they can instantly kill you, so you got to be careful. I think if all three of them stick into you, you'll just die. So you have to be very careful with that. But if you've gotten this far, you fought them before. See, that was very dangerous. It landed directly on top of me. But if you do it patiently, um, you know, you can run around and, and um, damage it. And then you're going to see me use possession one last time. At the very end, I'm going to use it again on him just so I can finish him off. You know, while he's possessed, I can uh, dump a bunch of ammo into him, basically. Of course, you want to hit the glowing part to do the most damage around his stomach. But as long as you're emptying a clip in him while he's possessed, you're going to do some nice damage. See, I possess him here, and now I just start emptying rounds into him. Now, he does wake up pretty fast from that, but it gave me a, a nice little damage to him. And I'm able to finish him off easily enough. I use the stim so I, I can absorb some damage and, and fire at him. But yeah, it's pretty much just moving around. It's very easy at this point. But it is a cheap part because it's, uh, it's like a surprise attack where you'll pretty much get killed instantly. 
if you don't use stim and then run down those stairs. It's kind of a cheap little scene. So yeah, I should have more footage up soon. And thanks for watching.